amalumbo kuliresa amalumbo kuligabumba amalumbo kulitata uwaika longa chindama mulia mulwa kwe amalumbo Nakula kutotela wele sana kula kutotela wele sawandi ati nakula kutotela wele sana kula kutotela wele sawandi nakula luma yeshi na lowe uluchelo akasuba uchungulo. Nobushigu lesa ube chigu sawandi ati lekeni ne mwinde lekeni ne mwinde chimbilele sa kabumba wandi uamba e kana besa wachi temuiko kanchi me amanaila e. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our Sunday service. My name is Prophetess Adele Mwanza. I'm glad to be with you this morning. I'd encourage you to just open up your heart. I'm excited about this word today. I've entitled this message, Arise. Hallelujah. Uh, our reading will come from the book of Mark chapter 2, verse 1 to 5, and then we'll skip down to verse 11. The Bible says, And again he entered Capernaum, after some days, and it was heard that he was in the house. Immediately many gathered together, so that there was no longer room to receive them, not even near the door. And he preached the word to them. And they came to him, bringing a paralytic who was carried by four men. And when they could not come near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. So when they had broken through, they let down the bed which the paralytic was lying. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven you. Verse 11 says, I say to you, arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. Let's just pray. Father, we want to thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you for your word of truth. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for this day that you have given us, that you have ordained to release your blessing upon us. I ask you now to intervene into every person's house and begin to bring a restoration, begin to bring a correction. I pray that every ear that is hearing this voice be subjected to the spirit of the living God to open up the mind and the heart and to receive that change that is so much required today. I thank you, Father God. May you give this word life in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I'm so excited to be with you. Welcome to the month of June. Even as we get into the word, I pray that the Lord will bless you and that he will keep you and that the Lord will make his face to shine on you and that he may be gracious to you in this new month. May the Lord lift up 
his countenance upon you and give you peace. Hallelujah. Now, this is a story I know that we are very familiar with, but I want us to tackle it from a different angle today. So just open up your spirit and open up your mind. Because every person that is born has a purpose, no matter how hopeless a situation seems. Hallelujah. One must fight in this life to discover what their purpose is. There is a day that is appointed for you. And there's a day that is appointed to disappoint everything that you're facing. Hallelujah. So don't lose hope. Don't be discouraged. There's a time and a season of fulfillment in heaven and on earth of God's promise over your life. Now, healing, as we know, is a provision. The more you speak about Jesus, the more he manifests as a healer. And today I want us to understand that healing is there for the taking. Jesus doesn't choose whom he heals, but the people choose whether or not to get healed. So I encourage you to just open up your heart. If you receive, if you need any form of healing, healing can be mental, mental healing, physical healing, spiritual healing. Today, take that healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, faith is always a requirement for healing and interacting with Jesus Christ. So I encourage you to have your faith ready, prepared faith, that you may get what is yours in the name of Jesus. Now, this story, as we have seen it, is a very special story because we see peculiar events happening. Jesus enters this place, his headquarters, back in his hometown, and he begins to preach the gospel. But guess what? There's a place that is crowded and we are told that there there is a paralytic there's a serious situation in here and there are only four men who decided to pick up this man and carry him to the place where Jesus was hallelujah i want us to look at these four men just for a little bit and i want us to look at what it means to be paralyzed amen paralysis as it is defined is an extreme loss of the power of motion that is dependent on the brain and the spinal cord. So I'm talking about physical paralysis. And then when the brain and the spinal cord are disturbed or injured or poisoned, the legs stop moving. In other words, the state of no movement begins to occur. Now we look at the attitude of the four men that carried this man to Jesus Christ. They took great effort to take the paralytic to him. Now, upon entry to this place, we are told that they faced certain obstacles. Isn't it amazing that even in the house of God, you may have obstacles when you are trying to get to Jesus Christ. The first thing that he encounters are the crowd. And I want us to talk a little bit about who the crowd really are. Amen. You see, the crowds gather for such events for entertainment. They never gather, gather for transformation. So crowds are there to kind of hinder, sometimes they actually hinder your divine encounters that Jesus has assigned for your life. So you need to be cautious not to be found with the crowd. The crowd can also obstruct open doors and opportunities for your breakthroughs. So one must be cautious about the crowd and the multitudes because we know that the, the multitudes only come for the miracles in these meetings. And soon after the meeting is over, either Jesus sends them away, even Jesus knows that the crowd can be a dangerous crowd. The multitude, one time Jesus went to a place and he sent the multitude away and took himself to a place of solitude to pray. It means that the crowd are loud, they are noisy, but their chatter is not necessarily impactful or influential. Hallelujah. Stay with me on this one. Amen. Now, I'm talking about arising in life. If you as a believer want to arise in this life, you must watch the associations that you keep. We are told there are only four men out of everybody who moved by faith to help this paralytic. Everybody else was too busy to intervene. So in other words, to arise in life, one must be found with people who have already risen. I'll say that again. To arise in your life, to anything that you want to be, be it in your career, in your ministry, you must associate yourself with people who have already risen. Sh iron sharpens iron. So you need to be found with people who are successful if you desire to succeed. Now, this means humbling yourself, swallowing your pride, 
lowering yourself to learn from them, to watch their mistakes, to watch their successes. Amen. So we need a learning spirit if we're going to succeed in this life. Amen. Now, for those who are thinking, I have a situation, I have a challenge, and maybe you're the one I'm talking to who's paralyzed, and maybe you're experiencing this kind of paralysis, maybe even in your marriage, in your business, in your career, in your education, in your finances, whatever the case, open your mind up to the area of your life that seems to be stagnant and has no movement. Amen. That challenge you might be facing is a challenge that God wants to use to be glorified. Now, never allow people to begin to take advantage of your disadvantage. Never allow people to take advantage of your disadvantage. Amen? Don't care how people see you. You should care how Jesus sees you. Because Jesus looks at you in a different perspective. Men look at you with another system altogether. So your, your, the opinions of man should not deter you with what God is trying to do in your life. Hallelujah. Listen, just because you are standing, there might be people who are standing, looking down on the paralytic. Does not mean that paralytic will never be used. Does not mean that business will never be used or that marriage will never arise. One thing is certain, as the men are looking down at the paralytic, the paralytic's perspective is only looking up. And if we remember correctly in Psalm 121 verse 1, the Bible says, I lift up my eyes unto the hills, for where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the creator of the heaven and the earth. So your perspective, even when you are down, you should keep your eyes fixed on Jesus Christ. You have a divine helper. As long as you can look up, you can get up. So whatever it is you're going through, child of God, stop pitting yourself because God wants you to arise above that situation. Amen? Now, never allow people to define you because every time people define you, they will refine you. And every time there's refinement, you will be in confinement. This means that people will bring you in a place of limitation. They have confined you under their ideas, under their system, because they've already defined you and refined you. I want to declare to you today that whatever has defined your situation, whatever has confined you to be in that place where you feel stagnant, where you are limited, I come against that spirit of limitation over your life. I break that bond of confinement over your business, over your marriage, over your family, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I declare it broken from this very minute. I want you to be excited about this word because even though you might not see things working out, God is already working it out in the background. Amen. The second thing that the four men had to deal with in as much as they entered the place and faced the crowd, they never expected the crowd to be that to be to, to that magnitude. So they decided to go up. They climbed round the stairs to take the man to the roof. I want you to try to picture this. The effort that they put in carrying a paralytic, going up. You know, in life, if anyone is to arise, they must climb to go higher. Before you can get to Jesus, climb to go higher in your prayer. Climb to go higher in your belief. Whatever you are doing to connect to Jesus, you must go higher. Begin to develop that intimate relationship. Spend more time in the word. Take it, take this word and read it, digest it, meditate on it until you find your place, your yourself at a place of great heights. Amen. Even though they went to that place, they had to break the roof open. <laughs> Imagine that a concrete ceiling, and they had to break that roof. I don't know how long Jesus was preaching for, but these people took time. They, took, they made effort to open up that place in order for that man to be right in front of Jesus. And you know, when you associate with the right people, make sure you associate with the people who are re ready to sacrifice for your life. Jesus understands men of sacrifice because men of sacrifice bring the desired results. So they were ready to pay the cost. They were ready to pay the price. Why do I say this? You can't go to somebody else's house and break their roof. You must be prepared to pay for the damages afterwards. Hallelujah. So they were ready to pay even for that roof, to mend it after they had done what they did. 
So prepare yourself and be found with such kind of men. Now I want you to understand that these men, we, all, we don't know their names. They are just mentioned as four men. They are men doing this not for show. <laughs> they are men that are doing this for God's glory. They only had their friends' interests at heart, not their own. Amen? So if you're going to be with people, sometimes people will try to help you based on their personal agendas and interests. But be with people who can actually sacrifice for you so that you can go to a higher level. Amen? Because in that association, you begin to look like them. You begin to behave like them. You begin to think like them. If they can sacrifice, you begin to learn how to sacrifice yourself. Amen? Hallelujah. So now we see a situation where even the association that you keep can actually turn you into somebody else. Saul, the Bible records that Saul was told, when the Spirit of the Lord comes upon you and you are with the prophets, you will turn into another man and begin to prophesy like them. So brothers and sisters, the association you keep really is a powerful tool for your rising up. Amen. Nobody rises up with bad association. You only go to the top with the people who are at the top. You strive to be at the top with the ones that you see already at the top. Amen. Your association therefore determines your destiny. Amen. Because the company you keep, like I said, it exposes how you think. So everything determines your destiny. I want you to understand something. Because I think sometimes we fail to comprehend that we're in the wrong company. The Bible says four men who had faith, one paralytic, probably did not have faith. Not the other way around. Where it is one man with faith and four paralytics or four without faith. It doesn't work the other way around. In other words, it already shows how you should associate and attach yourself to people of faith. If you alone are going to begin to work out your faith, attach yourself to people of faith. Amen. Now we see that these men's faith had impact. You know, most of the times we as believers think the faith that we have is only meant for our needs. I want to ask you a question today. Does your faith impact other people's needs? Is your faith able to transform somebody else's life other than your own? Do your actions actually have compassionate, are they compassionate actions towards the needs of others? Or is your faith only applied to yourself? Why am I talking about faith? Because sometimes we feel like we are stunted in faith, like we don't have faith. Everyone has faith. But how we use the faith will determine how we stretch it. And any stretched faith doesn't break. It continues to prolong and go on. There's a continuity. And any time there's a continuity, you'll see greater results. Glory be to God. So Jesus responded to their faith and he healed the man. <laughs> Other people in this place, the crowd, they were preoccupied with their own agenda. People of God, you might be like the crowd. Where you go to church, you are too busy with your own personal relationships, your own personal agendas, that you do not see the needs in the house of the Lord. I want to encourage you and urge you to transform your mind and begin to open up your heart to the needs of people around you. That way is the only way you can make impact in your life. Amen. You see, the crowd mentality is only concerned about themselves. themselves. The multitude always come to fill their bellies, but disciples always come to fill other people's bellies. I urge you and encourage you that you should be a disciple from today onwards. Look around you. Find that need because there is a blessing even for you as you do so. One of the things the Bible records is that Jesus saw their faith. Sometimes we think we have faith. But now I want us to look at 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 5 to 8. Why is it that sometimes our faith is stunted or it feels like it's, it's not producing anything? The answer is in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 5 to 8. And the Bible says, For this very reason, giving all diligence, add or supplement your faith. Add to your faith moral excellence. And to moral excellence, add knowledge. And to knowledge, add self-control. And to self-control, add patience. And to patience, endurance. And to endurance, godliness. And to godliness, brotherly love for all. 
Brothers and sisters, if you are going to expand and extend your faith, there are three things that effective faith will produce for you. The first thing is that there has to be an action. There's a result in action. The second thing is that there is a growth in Christian character. Christian character is not optional. It is essential for every believer. The third thing is that there will be a practice of moral discipline. When these three are combined, your faith will get to that place that you expect it to get. You'll have greater results. So faith must be accompanied by the fruit of the Spirit for it to function very well. Actions don't automatically occur. Actions are hard work. As we can see, they, they went in, they found the crowd, they climbed, they broke the roof. There's a lot of... It's not automatic. They were also not expecting those things. But they put in that effort. Even for faith to operate, actions are not optional. But they must, there must be an occasion where you continue your actions. Always continue. You don't say, oh, we had faith enough to take him to the place but we didn't have faith enough to enter. You must have a continuation of your action and your faith begins to blossom. Amen. Faith is not mobile, immobile. The enemy knows that if he can keep you stagnant in one place, even your faith is stagnant. Why am I saying this? The paralytic was, was, had no movement whatsoever. He was stagnant to the point where people had to take him to the place. Amen. May your faith be lifted even as we speak this morning. May you stretch out your faith and may you act in boldness in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I want us to look at the man's sickness. Paralysis. Now, his sickness is in twofold. I discovered this when studying this word. That he has spiritual sickness and he has physical sickness. Why do I say this? When Jesus first has an encounter with this man, he doesn't address his legs. He doesn't address the para paralysis. Instead, he says to the man, Son, your sins are forgiven you. The first concern of Jesus is your spiritual walk, not material things. I'll say that again. Jesus' first concern concerning your life is your spiritual health above your physical health. Amen? So Jesus corrected first the things in the spirit. And then the things began to manifest in the physical because life first starts spiritually. Everything is spiritual. Life is spiritual. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to understand that the, the root cause of this man's paralysis was sin. Sin has the capacity to paralyze every area of your life. Now, I know you are there and you're thinking, well, I'm walking around, I'm not a paralytic. But that does not mean that spiritually you're not paralyzed. You might be walking around very healthy, but in the realm of the spirit, things are stagnant. Things are paralyzed because of sin. And you convince yourself that you're just okay, that you don't need to change. My dear brother, my dear sister, get rid of the sin aspect so that things can begin to manifest on different levels in your life. Why do I say this? Jesus is concerned about your life. He addresses the paralytic as son. This signifies a covenant relationship. He's interested in you having an intimate one-on-one -on -one relationship. He's already telling him that your sins are forgiven you. In other words, he has removed, he has pulled away, he has taken away, he has carried away everything that hindered this relationship. He has renewed it even though there was a wrong done. That is the beauty about Jesus Christ. He can renew your relationship today. You just have to open up your heart and tell him to come through once more. Now, the word forgiven in Greek is aphemi. And forgiveness reveals a relationship that has been renewed despite a fault. It has to do with let, to let go, to give up a debt, to put away, to give completely without reservation. Now, for a believer to fully take forgiveness, one must also be able and willing to let go, to put out, to put away, to totally give up that debt that entangles you in sin. Then you will experience full forgiveness. Hallelujah. After that, restoration will come, and revival always follows forgiveness. While, while we are in this word, I want us to look at the last group of people. These are called critics. 
you know, we looked at the crowd. We are looking at the four men. And now we are looking at the critics. Who are the critics? The critics are the Pharisees. They are only in this place to make observations. <laughs> Pharisee mentality. They listen to answer. They don't listen to learn. And we have them in a place called the house of God. Everyone follows Jesus, but when it comes to interaction with the word, they are quick to criticize the word, or to question the word, or to disagree with the word. We have many people in the house of God that are busy bodies and are critics. They come to church and they'll begin to complain. The chairs are too dirty. The music is too loud. Oh, I don't want to sit here. They even complain when people sit in their favorite seat. <laughs> they have marked certain areas where they themselves should be sitting. If another believer sits there, forget the whole message. The whole time they'll be focused on where they were supposed to sit. And they never get anything. They live empty, totally empty. Now, any time that God wants to rise you, lift you up, take you to another level, take you to another dimension, you begin to see things you've never seen in your life, trust me, there will be critics. This is why we are talking about them. You don't need to mind the word of a critic. All you need to do is remember that God is doing a new thing in your life. You need to arise from that situation. Stop pitting yourself. Stop listening to critics' opinions. Begin to gird yourself up. Lift yourself up and begin to move because movement is very important if you're going to arise. Hallelujah. The critics thrive off people's disadvantages. In fact, they will say, I'm better than you, because they look at your disadvantage. Amen? The critics are always there to make observation, and they lack impact. Amen? They hear the word, but fail to impact the world. I pray for you today that you will never be a critic. If you are a critic, begin to surrender yourself. Begin to ask God to take over your life. Amen? Now, the thing is this. Jesus understood their words. He understood how they behaved. He saw their attitude. You know, even critics, when you have a breakthrough, they're never happy for you. They can't believe that God can do something marvelous in your life. That's why I'm saying you don't need to worry about the critics. Put them aside. Put the Pharisees to one corner of your life and begin to watch God do mighty works in your life. Amen? They follow, but they never submit. They follow Jesus Christ, but they never obey his word. They are always argumentative, always accusing. I don't know if I'm communicating to somebody who's ever found somebody in church, even in church. This is a house of God, people. And you find somebody accusing you constantly in the house of God. Be cautious of such behavior and avoid them altogether. Amen? Close your ears to the critic. Jesus has spoken words. Now, his words were backed up by his action. Actions are very necessary. Actions are the only reasons words become true. This is why this whole Bible is true. Because everything that was spoken of, Jesus has fulfilled. His words have been backed up by actions. And there are certain prophecies that are yet to be fulfilled. But the action definitely will begin to manifest in the end times. Hallelujah. I want to ask you something. Is your word, does your word back up your action? Do your actions manifest after you say you'll be, you, you'll help somebody in need? Do you actually just speak words and leave it there? Or do you actually follow through and begin to act towards what you have spoken? Amen. That's something for you to think about. I want to encourage those who are down, those who are discouraged, those who think Jesus has forgotten them, this is a season that Jesus wants to resurrect things. This is a season that things will begin to manifest very quickly. Even as you're lying down, whatever it is that you're going through, if it's spiritual paralysis, if it's physical paralysis, God is restoring your relationship right now. He is calling for you. He is asking you to come forward to him. He wants to do something new. It is up to you, my brother and sister, to begin to arise. As Jesus said, arise, take up your bed and go to your house. I want you to understand something. That bed is not to a reminder of the sickness that he had. That bed is a reminder of how Jesus healed him.
That sickness that you might have is not to the glory of God. It is the, what healing that, does, that Jesus brings that gives God the glory. Hallelujah. He's not trying to punish you through a sickness. Sickness is not of God. Amen. So he's, he's waiting for you to come halfway, meet him at a place where you can begin to take the full promises of God for your life. It requires your effort. You have that responsibility to begin to start moving, to keep pushing, to keep praying, to keep fasting, everything that you think you are doing that you see no results to. Keep doing it. Keep pressing. Keep praying. Keep studying the word. Keep meditating on that word. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I want us to just pray over you now in closing. Because God is interested in the covenant relationship. He wants to restore things in your life. He wants to bring things into your life to make them beautiful. Where you are is not the final place you're supposed to be. Don't be discouraged. Every time you are discouraged, the enemy disconnects you from the Spirit of God. That's why a lot of people in this period will find they are discouraged, they are heavy. Because the enemy, the minute discouragement enters, there's a disconnection. I decree and I declare over your life right now that there will be a connection in this season, to in this month of June, that you will encounter Jesus like never before. He will make himself known to you. He will reveal his plans that he has for you in this season. Those plans will begin to manifest. You shall leap up and begin to run. You shall not be weary. You shall run and not be weary. You shall succeed in everything that you do. I pray over you that you have the right association. I disconnect you now from anything that is bad company. Anything that is a crowd that is a hindrance to your breakthrough. I speak a disconnection. I render that crowd useless. I declare the way open for you to access Jesus Christ. I declare that your faith is going higher and higher. You are going to another level. God is lifting you up. As you begin to arise, I speak healing in your spirit. I speak healing in your soul. I speak healing in every area of your ideas. I declare healing in your material possessions. I declare healing in your emotions. Whatever has kept you paralyzed, I speak to that paralysis right now. I confront it. It has no power over your life. I declare movement from today. I declare progress. That limitation is broken in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak into those legs. You might be an actual paralytic and feeling weak or tired in your legs or heavy. Whatever the issue is in your legs, whatever it is in your spine, I decree and I declare over you right now by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Arise take up your bed and walk I rise take up your bed and walk begin to exercise now I speak healing in those legs I speak healing right now everything that shackled your legs to stop you from moving forward I break those shackles off your legs I declare divine restoration I declare strength to be restored in you in Jesus mighty name dear brothers and sisters it is time arise